Today, we're going to talk to Max Stoiber, and we're going to learn how he got started in web development, what he's up to today, and what he's going to be speaking about at the React Advanced London Conference. This video is sponsored by Git Nation. Be sure not to miss the React Advanced London Hybrid Conference happening October 22nd and 25th. React Advanced London will be a hybrid in-person and remote conference with over 60 speakers and more than 20,000 developers attending. There will be over 10 free remote and pro hybrid workshops included. You can expect to hear from authors and core teams from these amazing React libraries and projects. Join live chat rooms, after parties, and fun activities. Discover the future of React and connect with other developers from around the world. Get your tickets now using the link in the description to get 20% off. Max is an amazing developer, speaker, and coffee lover. He created React Boilerplate, Bedrock, Styled Components, and most recently co-founded Graph CDN. Thanks for joining, joining me today, Max. Um, did I miss anything? No, you got everything. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Awesome. No, I, I appreciate your time. And uh, so I wanted um, your your background and like how you got started is very relatable and it's it's very inspiring backstory. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your early journey? Absolutely, I would love to. Um, I got started in engineering or in, in programming, really, in school, just a little bit. We did like a little bit of HTML and CSS. Um, and afterwards, after school, I was like, I'm going to study computer science and I'm going to be a software engineer, right? Um, and it didn't really turn out that way because I didn't really enjoy studying computer science. It was too theoretical for my personal tastes. Now, in hindsight, seven, eight years later, I can say, actually, a lot of the stuff that I would have learned would have been very interesting. But hindsight is 2020, as we all know. Um, and I didn't really enjoy it at the time. And I was like, ah, I don't need to study. I've I just want to program, right? I just want to build websites. I, I'm, I'm, I really enjoy doing that and I do it every day. Um, and so I got an internship in London and, and I learned how to do really front-end development with a little bit of full stack, like real stuff thrown in there. And I came back and I was like, I'm going to be a front-end engineer and didn't find a job. I literally just could not find a job. And so I went back to university again because I was like, ah, I guess I just have to study to find a job, right? Otherwise, no one's going to employ me. And randomly overnight, one of my open source projects blew up. It could post it on Hacker News and it went to the front page and it stayed there for, for three, four, five hours, I think. And by the end of that day, it had 500 stars and it went all the way up to, I think, 2,000 or 3,000 stars within the next couple of days. And so suddenly I was like a famous open source developer, even though I was the same person I'd been all along, right? Like nothing had changed about me or, 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 or my skills, but suddenly I was sort of well known. At, made this big open source project that people liked. And I got overwhelmed with job offers and suddenly everybody wanted to hire me, right? It was just like, like the snap of the fingers. Nothing changed about me, mm -hmm. but suddenly people felt like they wanted to work with me. Um, and it was very surreal and still to this day is kind of surreal, but that really is what kicked off my early career, I would say. Yeah, it's amazing how open source can really expose you into so many different areas. Um, that's, that's just an amazing story. And um, so what, what are some of the companies that you've, you've worked for? I started out working at an agency down in Sydney, Australia called uh, ThinkMill. And they do a bunch of uh, agency stuff. Like they, they mostly build web apps and mobile apps for all sorts of big clients around Australia. But I was employed there to work on open source. And so I was employed to work on their open source content management system called Keystone. And that was awesome for me because I love doing open source and being employed full time to work on open source is, of course, a, a dream, right? And so I got to do that and I got to improve their CMS. And, and while I was down there, um, I also invented Style Components, which is now my most famous open source project and what most people know me for, I think. Um, afterwards, I, I co-founded a startup with two friends from California called Spectrum, where we were building a more modern take on a forum, a community platform. That eventually got acquired by GitHub, where I worked for a year and a half or so. And then I went to Gatsby, um, the JavaScript framework, which is now also a company and they're building services around that. And I worked there for, for a year or a year and a half as well. And now I've co-founded a new startup, GraphCDN with my friend Tim from Berlin. Nice. And that is what you'll be speaking about uh, at the conference, correct? Absolutely, because it's, 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 it's funny. I, when I built my last startup, Spectrum, we were using GraphQL and with huge scaling problems, because honestly, 
I had no idea what I was doing, right? I was the CTO, but I, I, I had done mostly like a little bit of full stack development and stuff in the past, but really had no clue what the, what the hell I was doing there. Um, and so we had huge scaling problems. <laughs> and the thing about Spectrum was that it was super read hit, right? It was a modern take on a forum. So a lot of people visited our website, but much fewer people actually wrote stuff. And I was like, okay, we have a read heavy API, right? A lot of the content is public. We should be able to cache all of this, right? Like, why are we going to the database and we have all these database troubles and server troubles? Why are we even doing this, right? Like, all of this could be cached. And so we started out caching our pages, but then I realized, actually, we can also cache our GraphQL API, right? Right? But really, we couldn't. <laughs> you right? should be able to. Nothing. Yeah, it, it felt like we should have been able to, but really, we couldn't. Because GraphQL clients, fundamentally, they do the same thing, right? Like, GraphQL clients, they cache GraphQL queries on the client. So why can't I just do the same thing on my server or even better at an edge, right? Why can't I do this globally distributed throughout the world in a CDN? And that just didn't exist. And so I built like a terrible solution for us at Spectrum in, in inside of our server. And we had like a Redis instance and it was terribly done because I still didn't know what I was doing. Um, <laughs> and it never really worked very well. And now fast forward four years later, I, 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 I get introduced to Tim and he tells me, hey, I've built a prototype of this thing that you wanted four years ago, right? Um, and I was like, wait, that's awesome. Somebody's finally done this. And so we start talking and we start working on this together. And we literally built out what I and also he wanted many, many years ago, which is a distributed CDN that edge caches GraphQL queries. And so it works with any GraphQL API uh -huh. and you can just give us your URL and we'll start caching your GraphQL queries. Uh, and I want to share how we did that because it's actually technically pretty co more complex than I initially thought. Uh, building up a worldwide uh, CDN is is not an easy task, and thankfully we can base our infrastructure on Fastly and uh, do all sorts of magic. But that's exactly what I want to talk about, right? Like, how did we go from we need edge ca edge caching for our GraphQL APIs to actually having a reusable edge cache that works really well, um, and some of the the struggles and, and the mishaps that we went into along the way. Yeah, I would have no idea even where to start. So I'm excited <laughs> to hear the talk to see how how you went about doing that. That's that's amazing. Um, so this uh, at this conference is this going to be the first, or will you be speaking in person at this conference? Uh, I actually think so. Yes, uh, assuming the, yeah. uh, so the we'll, situation doesn't change, which is going to be super exciting because I have not been in a crowd of people in a very long time, uh, and honestly. Yes. I love digital conferences, right? I think they're they're a different format and they're a different take, but they just don't replace in-person conferences, right? And I, I, I almost don't want to say this because yeah. I speak a lot of virtual conferences and they have their own advantages, right? But it's just not the same, right? I really enjoy connecting with people. I really enjoy chatting with people after the talk. And yeah, you can do that in virtual conferences, but it's just not the same, right? Like you can't really grab a beer together. You can't really hang out afterwards, have a party. Uh, so I, I look forward to doing that 100%. Definitely. Yeah. And just so that the uh, the listeners know, this is going to be a hybrid conference. So you can attend in person at the brewery in London or remotely. And so, you know, that, that's one of my questions was like, do you think that a hybrid conference in person slash remote is going to be like the the way of the future? Um, or do you think that we'll go back to just in person again? I think hybrid makes so much sense because if you the hard part about doing a hybrid conference is the virtual part right like the in-person conference part we've got figured out we've had that figured out for decades now right like people have been doing in-person conferences for hundreds of years right like there's, there's nothing new there but the only reason we haven't really done hybrid conferences is because nobody had really figured out the infrastructure to do that how do you mix in an in-person conferences with a live stream and how do you get these attendees to interact and like how, how does any of that work and now that we figured that out i don't see a reason why not every conference can work that way, right? Because there's awesome conferences all over the world that I would love to attend, but I, I can't, right? Like I can't just flag halfway across the world for every conference that I want to attend. Uh, and so this whole hybrid format makes a ton of sense to me and I can't wait for it to take off. Yeah, I mean, there's there's so many people, so many developers that just can't afford to go to these conferences or they, they just exactly. can't make it to them. And so this hybrid solution gives everyone access to the conference, whether you can make it in person or not. And the good thing is that this is a Git Nation conference and Git Nation knows how to do a hybrid virtual conference. They do that very yeah. well. The interactivity is above all others that I've ever attended. So this is going to be a great one. I agree. Um, so let me see before we wrap up, I think so we covered 
Your talk is going to be how to edge cache GraphQL API. So I'm excited to hear about that. Is there anything else that we missed or anything that you want to shout out before we close? Not really. Um, I'm super excited for the conference, honestly. Uh, that's the only thing I would say. But uh, other than that, I think we've covered a lot of ground. Awesome. All right. I appreciate your time again. And then whether uh, remote or in person, be sure to join us October 22nd and 25th at the React Advanced London Conference. We'll see I you there. I look forward to seeing you there. <laughs> be sure not to miss the React Advanced London Hybrid Conference happening October 22nd and 25th. React Advanced London will be a hybrid in-person and remote conference with over 60 speakers and more than 20,000 developers attending. There will be over 10 free remote and pro hybrid workshops included. You can expect to hear from authors and core teams from these amazing React libraries and projects. Join live chat rooms, after parties, and fun activities. Discover the future of React and connect with other developers from around the world. Get your tickets now using the link in the description to get 20% off.